Hello everybody and welcome back to Robert's Reviews. I'm filming this at 11.30 at night because I need to film it and I was in Niagara Falls all day. So uh, I apologize if I sound like I'm whispering. Um, I don't want to wake up my entire family so I will be talking quietly. Um, so today we have a movie that I have to watch for class. So for those of you who don't know, in my second semester of college uh, right now I am taking a class called The Art of the Motion Picture. And in it, we have to study films, and this is the first one that she asked me to study. So I had to study this movie, and uh, I decided I'll just run these on Saturdays or Sundays, whenever I get around to filming it. Um, but I, uh, I'll be talking about, you know, the regular review that I normally do. I might talk about what I'm going to talk about in class. We'll get there. Um, but uh, today we're going to be talking about E.T., the Extraterrestrial. E.T., The Extraterrestrial, was made in 1982. It was written by Melissa Matheson and directed by Steven Spielberg. I've seen this movie a couple times, uh, but, like, not, like, all the way through, and, like, not for the purpose of, like, reviewing it more so than, like, I just enjoy the movie. Um, but, uh, I mean, as, as you guys know, it's not a perfect movie, uh, but it is really, really solid, and I'm excited to talk about it. For those of you who don't know what E.T. is about, essentially, there's an alien, and he crashes down on Earth, um, and he's left behind by his friends, and he runs into a kid named Elliot, and they develop a really, really cool bond, and uh, it is Elliot's job to find a way to get him back to his home on the moon. And that's, like, the whole movie. So, talking about my thoughts of the film, I think I'm going to talk about what I'm going to talk about in class first. So, I think we're going to be talking about, like, how it was made and like, stuff like that, so I'm assuming uh, something like that, film form as well. I haven't read the chapter about film form yet, so I'm going to do that tomorrow. Um, and I'll probably amend what I'm going to talk about in class. But she asked about the physical structure of the movie. I am going to be talking about the lighting. Because the lighting in this movie is really spectacular. Because they don't want to shed too much light on the alien at first. Because they want it to be, you know, a gradual lead up into, like, this is the alien. Um, but also because, you know, maybe the special effects weren't quite ready to show yet. So if they film in a dark light where you can still see, you know, there's moonlight coming in. But it's coming in down instead of coming out at you. So you see some silhouettes. You see some of the, the curvatures of the alien's eyes and stuff like that. But uh, it really does, it helps A, set the tone, but also B, it helps because then you don't have to see the alien. So you can film preliminary shots without having to actually use the alien if you don't want to. Um, but it's a good way to build suspense and it's a good way to show off the alien without showing off too much special effects. Particularly in the case of the alien where it didn't really look particularly good. It was 1982, but and it was a prosthetic um, but uh, I think it was a smart way to use the lighting, and uh, I think lighting is something that a lot of people don't look at nowadays. It's uh, it's good. The soundtrack for this movie is fantastic. Uh, John Williams did this score, and uh, I really did enjoy the, uh, the 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 score. I'll be adding it to my phone, so I listen to it while I'm studying and stuff. I listen to movie music when I study, uh, just in case it'll help you guys. Um, I recommend it. Uh, Marvel music's really good to listen to when studying. Harry Potter music, you know, Star Wars. Just put that stuff on in the background, and like it really will. It'll help. Um, I do it all the time. I love doing it. Um, I will probably do it every time I study anything forever because I like it a lot. Um, also, little little sidetrack. Sleeping with Sirens is like one of the best bands ever. I just recently getting like started getting into them. They're really good, so check them out as well. Um, let's talk about the acting, and then I think I'll go a little deeper into my thoughts of the film. So first, Henry Thomas is Elliot. Uh, fair warning, it, it took so long trying to find, like, pictures of them from when they were young, so I'm sorry if they look blurry or not good. All three of these actors I'm going to talk about today were really young when they filmed this, and now they're, like, 40, so it was really hard to find. Well, they're, like, 50 now, 50 or 60. Um, it was really hard to find, um, actual pictures of them, so I'm sorry if they don't look particularly good. But Henry Thomas played Elliot, and, um, I don't think he did fantastic. I think he was good, but I don't think it was, like, star-worthy, uh, of a performance. There were a couple people I thought that did better. Um, but overall, I mean, he sold as a little kid. Um, his voice is really annoying, in my opinion. Not, like, to the point where I don't want to watch the movie, but, like, it's just generally, like, really annoying and high and shrieky. Um, but he has the look of a little kid, and he's, you know, he's good for a little kid. And he was able to portray the fact that he has a connection to E.T. So part of the movie, particularly in the middle, towards the middle end, um, E.T. and Elliot develop this, like, bond... And it's interesting because they were able to use that bond to show that, you know, E.T. was hurting. So, like, Elliot comes home, he's sick, he's tired, and he knows that E.T. is hurting because he feels the same thing. 
Um, and it shows that he has, like, you know, a connection to the alien, um, which is really cool because it's, it's a physical way of showing a love connection, right? Like, sometimes if you have a girlfriend, I don't, but if you did, um, if you had one, um, when they're sad, you will also be sad. It's an empathetic connection that you have with your loved ones. And this really shows a physical, physical connection. Like, you know, when he's not feeling well, he also doesn't feel well. Which I don't think is necessarily the way it was, like, supposed to be. I don't think it's, like, like an actual thing that happens in the movie. More so that it's more of a representational thing that, ha of, that happens. Um, I think it's a good use of symbolism, of love, and of connection. And I really enjoyed that part of the movie. I think that was really deep. Um, I'll probably talk about that in class if we talk about the form of the film. Um, because the movie is, you know, sci-fi e, but it really, it's it's more of a love story between, you know, two friends, uh, and it's 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 a really good, really solid story. And Henry Thomas was good. I don't think he was fantastic, but he was at least fine. Drew Barrymore as Gertie. So this is very young Drew Barrymore. Um, and I really liked her performance in this. I think she was really good. She was a sassy young little girl and had a lot of fun uh, watching her play this part because, you know, she would, like, tell mom everything. And, like, it was, it was really, it was just really funny. I really enjoyed the the, uh, the acting here. I don't think they could have casted anybody else as a young girl and have them do that that well um, and really, you know, kickstart a career. Um, so uh, that's really good. I enjoyed it. I think it was really good. I think it was better than Henry Thomas, but I don't think it was as good as... Robert McNaughton as Michael. So Michael is the brother, and he's not a huge person in the movie. He's kind of like a side character, but I really liked his performance a lot. He's he's able to play nerd because he's a nerd in the movie, but he's also able to play jock, and he's also able to play like I hate you, brother, but I also love you, brother. At the same time, there's a whole like, influx of emotions and and fun things to play with in this movie, and I think he did really well. I think honestly, he might have had the best performance of the film, even though he was you know more of a side character than anything else. But uh, overall, the movie, so I, I do want to talk a, a, a little bit about a couple things I didn't like about the film. So first, the special effects, I think, were, they, were, they were fine, uh, but I don't necessarily think they were fantastic. There were times that, that, that like, like when the alien spaceship's moving, I don't think it's CGI, because I don't think CGI was huge at this time. I'm, I know it wasn't huge at the time. I'm assuming it was probably, you know, a cardboard cutout with a backdrop, painted backdrop, and with lights behind it shining back and forth, like they did in uh, Citizen Kane, um, even though that was more of an old form of what I'm talking about. Um, they also did a lot with Star Wars and stuff like that. Um, I do think it was well done. I think the, the special effects were generally well done. I think they could have used the alien a little bit more in terms of, like, you know, specifics, because we see a lot of his shadow, and I think the dummy was good enough to really show the whole dummy. There were times where, like, we only see part of it, but, like, I know it was a dummy, and it was also a costume, depending on what scenes they were filming. Um, I think they could have used a little bit more of the alien to really sell the fact. Um, one thing that they could have worked on, in my opinion, was the, when, when the E.T. gets sick, and he's in the river, it looks gross, and, like, not very good either. It's just gross in a bad way. It looks like roadkill, um, which I understand is kind of the point, but also not the point at all. Um, I think they could have used it a little bit more strategically, and it might have been a little bit better, but it's not, like, it's not, like, bad or anything, but it's not, it's not very good either. But other than that, I think this movie's fine. I really enjoyed watching it. I think that in terms of, of special effects and in terms of storytelling, it's, it really is a marvel, um, and I really enjoyed watching E.T., and I'm going to go ahead and give it an A. Okay, if my theory is correct, I'll be releasing this on the 6th, I think. Um, so let's talk about next week real quick. We have Suicide Squad on Monday, DCEU. We have The Departed on Tuesday. I already watched it. Uh, I'm excited to talk about it. Um, I already have talked about it, but you haven't heard me talk about it yet. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, I need to film that um, with Julian. I'm hoping um, we'll do that today, or tomorrow, sorry, but I'm not sure. Minions and The Queen's Gambit. So that is next week. Uh, next week is uh, a little bit of up, an up and down week in terms of reviews, but uh, the following week uh, seems very promising. So uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the content. If you guys have any more criticism or anything like that, drop it in the comments down below. I'm just trying to get better. I want to be a solid YouTuber. Um, I think I got the schedule down pat, and I'm really enjoying the way that the channel is running. It feels really smooth, and I'm really enjoying the way that I'm able to watch a movie film the video about it and then edit it and then upload it and then I'm, I'm a couple weeks ahead now um, which is good because school looks like it's going to be kicking my butt soon uh, but we'll see but uh, I think that's going to do it for me today as always keep watching movies and television stay educated and I'll see you guys in the next video